there's, there's tremendous uh, commitment to compassion and sensitivity and to being a savior of, of a sort, whether it's for your family or whether it's for you, people that you work with, but there's a saving energy that's with Saturn and Pisces. And let's look at this together too. Um, fear of losing oneself in chaos, in the inexplicable. Fear of deep emotions and sympathy. Fear of becoming helpless. Um, so the compulsion is self-sacrifice. That's a big thing with Saturn and Pisces or Saturn and 12 houses, the sacrificing of the self. Deep feelings of guilt, experiences of pain. When you really start to breathe in your own authority and you start to give yourself to that, like, yes, I'm sensitive, but I'm also strong, <laughs> you know, then you have true brotherly love, true connection, deep sensitivity, selfless love, a, a mature trust in the self that will guide you. Um, and the, the willingness to pardon, the willingness to forgive, there's, there's, um, it's moving from the fear of the unknown to, the set, to walking into the unknown and saying, and here I stand, arms opened, sensitive being that I am, trusting. How does that sound? <laughs> so if you put Saturn and Pisces in the fifth house, you walk into this great realm of creativity that is this great unknown, and you stand there, arms open wide, perhaps, you know, experiencing pain, but also perhaps in a, such a state of openness and vulnerability that anything can happen. And it's terrifying when you have Saturn in Pisces or Saturn in the 12th house to do this and to walk into the unknown. But that's exactly your cutting edge. That's exactly your line, of, you know, the line that you have to walk. Yeah. And another Saturn in the 12th house? That's okay. the unknown responsibility, since it's in Capricorn. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, I'm okay, I'll be responsible. Unknown responsibility. Yeah. Well, the 12th house is the house of the subconscious and the unconscious. It also rules hospitals. It also rules prisons, remember? Interestingly. Um, it also rules, it rules anything that society, you know, sort of society's... Underbelly. Yeah, underbelly. And so I wonder, I don't know how that would manifest in your life, but um, yeah, there's something, there's something about organizing to, to save, organizing to be of compassion and help in the world, organizing to say hello love. I have to say hello love. I mean, you do it hello love. Did anybody else want to share their saving symbol? Or, yeah, I love math. <laughs> it's so funny. It explains my whole life. Right? <laughs> it explains a lot, actually, not my whole life. Um, a five-year-old child carrying a bag full of filthy groceries. <laughs> it says, rising to the occasion when asked to assume social responsibilities ahead of one's normal development, accelerated growth. Yeah. That makes sense for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Given responsibility early. Early, and, yeah. And yes. Yeah. And that's interesting. Like, the idea of, with Saturn and Capricorn people, they, 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 they seem so capable that, that they might be given responsibility early. And then that might have something that we could talk about as far as the 12th house, like not wanting that, so hiding it away. So like, oh, I'm not really that responsible. Don't give me that, you right. know, because the 12th house wants to hide it away sometimes. So um, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A woman reading tea leaves? Ah. A woman, so, yeah. So it, I think it's knows that. What did I write? What, what, what's written underneath? The ability to see the signature of hidden meaning in every occurrence, drawing one's attention. Clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to read the whole thing afterwards, you can read the whole thing. But, but I mean, it's, it's something for you. I mean, that, that makes sense to me about you, absolutely. You know, that in the moment, being able to extract the value of something or extract the meaning of something or the. In a, in a sort of magical moment, and you have Saturn in the second house as well, so the, about values and the serious attention to those things that have value and what has value, and you put your attention on it, and magical things happen, and you see the meaning in things. You see about beyond the physical forms of things. Mm -hmm. I, I think do. other people <laughs> may see it clearer. What? Other people may see it clearer because yeah. they come to me or something, but it just, mm -hmm. I don't, I guess, necessarily see it myself all the time. So. You're writing? Yeah. Yeah. It's 
So if, and these images are, th are things that you can really sit with and, and see if they, if, you know, if they have resonance for you or not. Yes? It might seem a little, I, I don't understand it, so maybe you can help me with it. it we'll says, see. An illustrated lecture on natural science reveals little known aspects of life. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I, wish, I think I still have your Jupiter one, which was, was it, yeah, I think your Jupiter one that was hilarious <laughs> that you need to read because I was like, what will I say about this? It was like a boy on his hobby horse. It was sort of, you know, <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but um, okay, read this again. An illustrated. An illustrated lecture on natural science reveals little known aspects of life. Okay, and then what underneath? The ability to explore unfamiliar realms and discover the laws underlying the complex process of nature. Exploration. Hmm. That makes sense for me to buy you. Okay, here's a, here's a, a dear friend. <laughs> yeah. can you, can you, what makes sense about it, too? Um, I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's very natural to you, to me. And, and the point that it's illustrated, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's just that. No, it seems that, that it's not so much about a lecture type of thing, but do you actually hands-on experience for you to do that, uh, uh, you know, to, for your own exploration or something? You see things and stuff, and you can analyze them easily. Yeah, so it you kind of know you kind of know nature, you kind of know the way God's laws work, the, how the universe works. It's not a big deal for you. But you know that. Is there a final word underneath too? Exploration. 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 Yeah, exploration. Okay, you know, and I mean, again, in a way, the best way to use these is to sort of let them kind of like, hmm, as opposed to like really trying to di dissect it, but just like, okay, and I have, just have an image of yourself doing that even, or an image of yourself in that, and see how it feels, and you know, and it might have a clue to how to get your Saturn working, you know? It might, or it might have a clue to where you <laughs> felt limited, or it might have a clue to where you, you know, felt responsibility early, or, yeah, I have to, I have to say, I, I must have been like eight or nine, and my parents are in the service, so they would always go to the Navy Exchange or the commissary like once a week or once every two weeks, and then, because we didn't go off, and we'd get all our groceries, you know, so I'm the oldest, and there's like two huge carts that my mom with her three little kids, Taylor, you know, in the grocery store. And then we're all, you know, I'm pushing one cart, she's pushing, we're trying to keep my brothers and everything. And I went down the, the ramp and hit up a pothole. And the, all the groceries, I'm full, <laughs> loaded. Wow. You know, and my mom wanted to kill me. You know, it's like, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my fault. Well, you should have done better, you should have done better. It's like, well, okay, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I just, well, that is interesting. It's like the moment that you, 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 you say this responsibility is too much, and I'm gonna go hide instead. <laughs> I know, I know. I and then, it's, but then, but then, but all from the get go, you have that incredible ability to climb and to organize, and you have that. It's just about aligning that up with what your purpose is, what you want to create, what you want to take from as an Aries, what you want to take from spirit and manifest in matter. You know, your it's what your baby. Right. Yeah. I'm not surprised it's in a 12 house. Yeah. <laughs> I love the 12. <laughs> um, do anybody else? Yeah. I have two questions. Yes. The first one is I would like to get a clue about how to get sad and working in my life by sharing my savings. And money. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Holly and Mistletoe reawaken old memories of Christmas. <laughs> a, a longing for the pre intellectual state of consciousness. A return to the force. Mm -hmm. So to me that feels like <laughs> I mean it feels like getting out of here and like feeling into what felt good or or if nothing felt good, creating an image of what might have felt good and living in that. Yeah? It's sort of that red. Can you read the Sabian symbol again? Sure. Holly and mistletoe reawaken old memories of Christmas. There's something about that, and then the next sentence, which is? A longing for the pre intellectual state of consciousness. That, that, it, that period between zero to three when we're just, when we are, we come into the world who we are, and then life happens, you know? And it's that time of, that purity of 
childhood and spirit when you were whole, and then tr and trying to return to that time. That's how it resonates for me. That's so interesting that you say that because you know I immigrated from Korea when I was around three or four, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember anything about Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost like that 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 age period that you're talking about between zero and three. I almost have to like recreate it. Mm -hmm. And yet, that's who you are. I mean, we, we, that's when we become who we are. So there's that time that you don't remember, and yet. It's who you are today. That's great. Yeah, and it's also, that's wonderful. It's right on. And it's also like before great loss, before, you know, great responsibility. And maybe, and it's before you even didn't want to speak. Do you know what I mean? It's in Saturn and Gemini before the feeling of fear of speaking out. When, when's, have you, when's the last time you went? To Korea. When I was 18, 17, 17. Yeah, that was that while I was in college. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, yeah. Well, that goes with your Gemini and 11th house. Saturn and Gemini and 11th. 11th house being groups or communities and stuff, and talking about Korea and stuff, talking about. To what community do I belong? Mm -hmm. To what uh, group do I belong? You also had a Sabian symbol for your rising sign that it remember the that I like so much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the um, Indian girl introduces her white boyfriend to her tribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I love about that is that it's like the blend of you know commu cultures and communities and you know even just like Maria now studying you know the metaphysics or whatever and introducing that into a community that isn't necessarily like. Uh, you know, thrilled about it or, or uh, knows about it, you know? I mean, I feel like you are this bridging energy and maybe there's some kind of bridge between exactly what Melanie just said, this zero to three time that you can't even name in a way that has some holly poly and mistletoe in it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, mm, the, mm, the pleasurable oneness. Mm. Return to the Yes. So my second question is, what is Yeah, a quintile is an aspect of sort of fabulous, it's 72 degrees apart, and it's um, electric 